you guys had such a quick turnaround from that 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 album. Uh, so in 2002, just a year later, you guys released Back Into Your System. Uh, three singles, Always, Rest In Pieces, and Raise Up. It it debuts in the top 20. It goes gold, 500,000 copies sold. Uh, were you feeling massive pressure to follow up the platinum success of the last album before this one? Absolutely. There's an old saying, you have your whole life to write your first record and you've got about six months to write your second one. So <laughs> we were concerned about the sophomore jinx and all that, but we got lucky and, and always actually was a number one single on the uh, mainstream rock charts. So that was our first number one. And that album is, it may be platinum now, I haven't checked lately, but it was teetering on it like a year or so ago. Um, because that, again, that was getting into the time frame where people started, you know, uh, st streaming, mu pirating music and buying less physical copies and stuff. So I think if it weren't for that, it probably would have sold way, way more. Um, but we were we we were uh, extremely lucky again and had some more fire, you know. Yeah. So now that we're in 2023 and I can look back at Saliva's entire career. So the band has had 39 singles and to this day always is still the band's only number one single. So does it have a special place in your heart being the, the only number one? I mean, it's hard to have just a hit. It's almost impossible to have a number one hit. You're correct. And it does. <clears throat> and here's another fun story about always the writing of always. We were in the studio with our producer, uh, Bob Marlette, uh, he, who produced that record. He produced our first two records. Um, and we were kind of, we didn't have that song written when we got to the studio. So we were kind of writing with Bob. And at first, when we were like working on that song, I, I hated it. I couldn't stand it. Um, I don't know why, but it was a different time. I, I didn't feel like it was saliva it, it felt different than you know our other stuff and and i remember even getting mad in the studio and throwing my drumsticks down and i i, I don't want to i'm not tracking this blah, blah 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 and i walked out of the studio and the producer came out and he he chatted with me and he was like look man i get it just do let's just do me a favor let's just let's just track all anything that we write and if at the end of the day we we decide against it, we won't put it on the record. Let's just record it. Just give it your best shot. And, I was like, and he talked me into it. So uh, and then, of course, it's our biggest song ever. And <laughs> so from that point on, I kind of had the mentality of, look, if we're writing a song and I don't like it, we should record that song. <laughs> yeah, if you don't like it, that that's how you know it's going to be a hit. Apparently, no, I love the song. Obviously, it grew on me, and you know, I was younger and a different mentality, and still kind of new to the game at that point. You know, and plus, coming off of the success of the first record, you start getting a little bit of that ego when you're younger. Which I have no ego anymore, but I definitely did back then. I think we probably all had a little bit of it. You know, when when I talk to musicians now and they think back to when they were releasing their albums, all they remember are the negative reviews for some reason. That's just the way that we're wired. So I, I was able to dig up two positive reviews about this album that I thought m might get you in the feels when you think back. So All Music praised the band for making the album focused in its overall sound and musicianship, concluding that the best thing about Back Into Your System is that the disc doesn't seem to pander to rock radio as much as others of its ilk. It still managed success regardless on radio. Then the internet publication Melodic also praised the band's commitment to delving deep into crafting solid musicianship while still retaining a semblance of their given genre. So a couple positive reviews to think back on that album. That's pretty awesome, man. And um, even still to this day, I was always in the mindset of, and we all, everyone in the band was at the time, don't pay attention to the reviews, don't pay attention to the negative press. Most people that write those articles especially the negative ones couldn't even draw a picture of a music note they're like not music <laughs> or journalists so we always just kind of avoided you know reading comments and all that stuff um but that's pretty awesome though